to our another night of our summer youth revival. We are thankful that you're here and that you're able to worship with us. Tonight, we want to welcome everyone that's joining us via our social media platforms. We say welcome. If you were here last night, you were blessed, and I know that tonight will be another blessing. Service will continue on Wednesday night as well as on Friday night. And on Wednesday night, we'll have our special prayer service night. So we're inviting you to bring your family, bring a friend for a special prayer at this time. So enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you for coming and be blessed. We will begin our praise and worship with our praise team. Praise the Lord. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing us together once again. As we lift praises to your name, we ask that someone will be blessed by this portion of the ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, no. 
continue with a song that's relatively new. It's called Cornerstone, but the verses are two verses that come from hymn 522. Who knows what hymn 522 is? What is it? What is hymn number 522? There you go. My hope is built on nothing less. So the verses are two verses from my hope is built on nothing less the tune is different and the chorus is different so we'll sing this song together some of you may know it but i hope that by the time we're finished we're all ready to sing it burden of sin. There is wonderful power in the blood. Power 
say the AY motto, pledge, and aim. The AY aim. The Advent message to all the world in my generation. The AY motto. The love of Christ compels me. The AY pledge. Loving the Lord Jesus, I promise to take an active part in the work of the youth ministry of the church, doing what I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. Amen. Our scripture reading will be taken from 1 John 2.14. 1 John 2.14. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the words of God live, lives in you, and you have, have overcome the evil one. Amen. May the church please be seated. Even our best laid plans can be interrupted, diverted, or closed off, but aligning our plans to God's will can always guarantee success. May the deacons, ushers, please stand. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us all here tonight. Please bless the offering and please help this program to be a blessing. In my prayer, amen. Steadfast and true. And he chose him as a companion in labor and travel. Now those who had taught Timothy in his childhood were rewarded by seeing the son of their care linked in close fellowship with the great apostle. Timothy was a mere youth when he was chosen by God to be a teacher. But his principles had been established by his early education that he was fitted to take his place as Paul's helper. And though young, he bore his responsibilities with Christian meekness. Now, I, take, I took this quotation from Acts of the Apostles, page 203. Now, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and admiration for Paul, Timothy took the mantle of leadership in God's church. And from the prison cell in Rome, Paul used all his influence to encourage Timothy in his spiritual walk with God. Yes, Paul had witnessed his conversion, his baptism, and his call into ministry. And as Timothy's spiritual guardian and advisor, Paul offered the young man some spiritual counsel. But Jesus warned us that it would be better if we had a millstone wrapped around us and we'd be dropped in the sea than for any of us to mess with his young flock. You see, God loves young people. Oh, no, no, I don't think you believe what, I'm trying, what I just said right there. Let me say that again. God loves young people. God loves to use young people. He has used young people in the past. And he will use young people in the future. Come on now. In fact, as Sister White outlines it, the Lord has appointed a youth to be his helping hand. And contrary to popular ecclesiastical thinking, there are blessings for being young. 
even the apostle John admitted, I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. Yes, young people, you are in the prime of life. You possess energy, strength, and vigor for the task. The cares of this life have not stamped out the possibilities that could be accomplished in you. You do not have a lot of baggage. Come on now. In addition, young people tend to be innovative, creative, and think outside of the box. Now let me pause here a moment to address the adults. God expects adults to support the young people and not be guilty of discouraging them. Some adults can I be can I be oh, can I can I tell you the truth tonight? Some adults struggle with the notion that the pastor, the elder, the youth leader, or the doctor or the attorney is the same age or younger than their children or grandchildren. Nevertheless, we have to grant the youth the opportunity to spread their wings. To help them to live up there to their God-given potential. To lift them up when they fall. And to grant them guidance. Am I speaking to somebody tonight? Yes, they will make mistakes. Oh, let me say that again. They will make mistakes. They will not always be perfect. But guess what? That's when they need you the most. And the truth is, God doesn't measure a follower by their physical age. Maturity in Christ has nothing to do with the amount of years a person has been a Christian or had their names written on the church books. It has to do with one's level of commitment and dependence upon God. And then the second point that Paul makes, which is the crux of my message tonight. Is be thou an example of the believers. Now this is a very heavy statement. It carries with it great responsibility. And it's a task not easily carried out. But I believe that there are young people tonight. Who are willing to stand for Jesus. Come on now. I believe that there's young people tonight who are willing to put God first. And I believe that there might be some young person here who is trying to live right. Yes, trying to live a godly lifestyle. And because of this, you might be ostracized and marginalized. You may not have many friends because you choose to live by the principles taught to you by your parents and by the word of God. And so you might feel lonely, yes, even abandoned and rejected. But I want to let you know tonight that it pays to serve Jesus. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I, I said it pays to serve Jesus. You're not alone in this Christian thing. God is right there with you. In fact, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he assures us that even when mother and father forsake us, he will be right there to pick us up. I'm saying tonight, you are not alone. In fact, we have many instances in the Bible of young people who stood forth as examples. And as we can see in this passage of scripture, 
Timothy was one of them. Timothy, like many of us, young people here tonight, grew up in the faith. He grew up in the church. Perhaps he went to Sabbath school. He most likely attended adventurers and pathfinders. He was an AY leader like Sister Carr. In fact, Paul, in reflecting on this fact, make this statement in 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. And I want us to read it together now. 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. What does the Bible say, everybody? When I call to what? Remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which what? Dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice and I am persuaded now take notice of the words that Paul uses to describe Timothy he says on faith unfeigned faith that is in thee now in describing this word unfeigned the Seventh-day Adventist Bible commentary uses such words as without pretense, not play acting. In other words, Timothy wasn't one who was playing church, but was serious about this Christian walk. He was serious about God. In fact, in the book Education, Sister White highlighted the importance of having young Christians with unfeigned faith. She says, the greatest want of the world is the want of men. Now, when she uses the word men, I'm going to put young people. Yes, young people who will not be bought or sold. Young people who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Young people who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Young people whose conscience is as true to duty as needle to the pole. Yes, young people who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. These are the young people that we need today. Young people with principles. Young people with backbone who are not easily influenced. Come on now. Young people who are willing to stand for Jesus. Timothy exhibited these types of characteristics as outlined here by Sister White. And that's why Paul could encourage him to be an example. And I want us to take note that Paul wasn't asking Timothy to be an example to other youths alone. But be an example, period. To both young and old. You see, there are times when you will not only meet other young people, but even adults who will disappoint you. Hmm. Yes. Adults who do not live up to the right, although they know better. In fact, that adult might be even a family member or a parent. But that does not give you an excuse not to be an example. That does not give you an excuse not to stand for the right. It does not give you an excuse to abandon God and to do your own thing. You know, this is something that I hear sometimes from young people. That they're looking at the adults and they're being discouraged by the adults. But young people, let me, let me, just, let me, let me let you know something right now. It's not... Sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so who died for you. Come on now. It was Jesus Christ who gave his life for you. 
And you cannot allow any brother or any sister to prevent you from getting into God's kingdom. Come on now. God is counting on you. The whole of heaven is watching you. Is the word clear tonight? And so Paul asked Timothy to be an example in word. What we say. In conversation, how we carry ourselves. In charity. In spirit. In faith. In purity. Now, I want to let you know that as Seventh-day Adventists, as a child of God, people are watching your lifestyle. They're listening to the words you speak. Are you truthful, fair, honest, kind, and respectful? They're watching the love you sow. Are you kind-hearted or mean-spirited? Are you faithful? Do you live a clean life? Jesus tells us to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father which is in heaven. In other words, continue to be an example in all that you do. But most of all, don't be ashamed of your love for Jesus Christ. Continue to be an example for both believers and non-believers. You see, what I really want us to understand tonight what I really want us to understand and grasp this evening is that it pays to serve Jesus. There is nothing better than to be in the service of the Lord. Yes, once you stand up for God, he has promised that he will stand up for you. In fact, the Bible is replete with stories of young men and women who are used, who are used by God. Yes, you have Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. Because they stood up for God. They stood before kings. God promoted to the highest positions in society. And witnessed God do impossible. Yes, work miracles in their lives. Could you imagine... If the three Hebrew boys did not stand up for God on the plains of Jura, they would not have such a powerful testimony of how God turned a burning fiery furnace into an air-conditioned spa. And we know about Joseph. He was an example in purity. He saw the hand of God lead in his life. He was transformed from a slave to prime minister of Egypt. I was able to save the lives of many in the world. And I dare not forget about David. He depended on Jesus. And he was able to defeat giants, vanquish his enemies, and became the ancestor of of the Messiah. I'm saying friends tonight. That is pays to serve Jesus. In fact I believe that there's some young person here tonight. Who can testify. That God has been good to you. Is there anybody who can testify about that? Come on. Can you testify that God has been good to you? Can you testify that he's a friend that is true? I'm sure there's somebody who knows that Jesus is the lift of their head. What do you say? And there's one last young man that I would like for us to consider tonight. I want us to look at Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm going to be reading verses 4 through 8. Again, Jeremiah chapter 1. And we're going to be reading verses 4 through 8. What's the Bible say, everybody? Then the word of the Lord, what? 
came unto me saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a what? A child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Verse 8 now, Be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver thee say the Lord or somebody else to say amen. amen like Jeremiah God has called you Jeremiah 21 29 I'm sorry 29 verse 11 says I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. And a future. And like he told Jeremiah. Although you are young. You can stand up for me. Yes. Do not be afraid of their faces. Don't be intimidated by who you come in contact with. Because once you stand up for me, I will stand with you. Now don't get me wrong now. God never promised that there will not be trials. In fact, these young biblical giants all suffered at one point for their belief. But in the end, it was still worth it. I mean, for one thing, once they remained faithful to God, they never had to suffer with a guilty conscience. You see, God never promises a bed of roses. Only the ability to overcome. That's why Paul could say, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed i'm saying friends we can be an example and overcome today because we know that despite what we may face in life we can say like job i know that my redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Praise God. And so in closing, I'm going to read to you an excerpt from Sister White. She says, with such an army of workers as our youth, rightly trained might furnish how soon the message of a crucified, risen, and soon coming Savior might be carried to the whole world. How soon might the end come? The end of suffering and sorrow and sin. Praise God. Aren't you glad that despite ourselves, that God's grace and mercy has still brought us through? Praise God. God is indeed good. Again, I believe that there is some young person here who's trying to live that Christian lifestyle. I know it can be a challenge and sometimes you can be discouraged but I'm encouraging you to tonight 
not to give up. Keep holding on to Jesus. Aren't you thankful for Jesus? Praise the Lord. Aren't you tired of this world of sin? If you're tired of this world of sin, let me just see you raise your hand. Praise God. Praise God. But it's not just important for us to be tired of sin. It's in our power to hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. To follow the, exalt, the, the words of exhortation that Paul gave to Timothy to be an example. And so if you're willing to do what God wants you to do, if you're willing to go where God wants you to go, why don't you stand with me tonight? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, salvation is still free. Amen? I said salvation is still free. Heaven is still reachable. Heaven is not a dream. It's a real thing. And so if you want to ask the Lord to help you to remain faithful to your call, until the very end to not to give up this fight but to keep pushing on in Jesus I want to invite you to come and join me at the altar as we pray and I saw Pastor Philip came and I'm going to ask him to come and to pray for us our young people everybody if you want everybody should be coming here we want to be to make it into God's kingdom don't we we want to make it into God's kingdom. So we're going to ask God tonight to help us to remain true to the task. Not to move to the left. Not to move to the right. But to stay faithful with Jesus. Praise the Lord for those who are coming. Praise the Lord for those who are coming. Both young and old. God we praise. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our Heavenly Father and our God, how thankful we are that you love us with an everlasting love. And that there is no one, no situation in this world that could separate us from your love. Oh, yes. We thank you tonight for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for your saving grace for the blessed hope that burns within our hearts we are thankful for the message tonight and the assurance it brought to us that we can have salvation in jesus christ that's right that's right we ask for the forgiveness of our sins we are sorry for the mistakes that we have made and we are grateful tonight that you're not willing to treat us as we deserve but you're willing to forgive us. Amen. So pardon us, dear Father, from the wrong things that we have done and give us the assurance of knowing that we have victory in Jesus Christ. Amen. We are at the altar tonight and we are standing indicating that we want to be overcomers and to make it into your kingdom. Oh, yes. So apply your grace to our lives. Give us the faith to trust you knowing that just as you did it for Jeremiah and Daniel and others, that you could do it for us. That's right. We pray for our young people who are here tonight. And we are grateful that they have made a decision for Jesus Christ. Amen. They want to serve you. They love you. And while there are many voices that are calling them, we pray that they will always hear the voice of Jesus. That's right. Grant them your Holy Ghost power and help them to understand that on Calvary's cross, the power of sin in their lives have been broken. Amen. 
so they can be victorious that's right, that's right. they can walk triumphantly right. and they could live with the assurance of knowing that they are children of god Amen. we thank you for the message that brought pastor estelle brought to us continue to use him each night we come to this place as he ministers to us help that our faith in you will grow from strength to strength and so we express our appreciation to you once again dear father that you love us that you have offered us salvation and you have given us the opportunity of spending eternity with you oh, yes. so let your blessings rest upon us tonight in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. Amen. We want to say thank you to Pastor Estelle for bringing us tonight's timely message that reminds us that we need to remain faithful to God and he will remain faithful to us. Thank you all for coming out to tonight's meeting and we look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday night where we continue. We will stand and sing our closing song, hymn number 618, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. God bless. Father in heaven, thank you for waking us this morning. Thank you for letting us see another day by your wonderful grace. Thank you for getting us here safely to hear your wonderful words of life. Thank you for once again providing for us in each and every way possible. 
please let the message that was spoken here today reach someone, anyone who's willing to open up their heart to you. And I ask that you all keep us safe as we go to our respectable places of residence. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen.